This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. I'd like now to um, introduce our next speaker, the President of uh, University of California. It is my great pleasure to introduce uh, President Janet Napolitano. She is a lifetime public servant. She was named the 20th President of the University of California in July of last year and took office in, on September 30th. Almost immediately taking office, she laid out a bold agenda for the institution. And in the last few months, seven months, of course, few for a presidency, she has really instituted a number of key programs and initiatives that will lead the institution forward in ways that we all aspire. Prior to coming to UC, she served as the Obama administration, in the Obama administration as Secretary of Homeland Security. From 2003 to 2009, she served two terms as governor of Arizona, which was preceded by service as Arizona's Attorney General. A lawyer by training, President Napolitano worked in private practice until 1993, when she was appointed by President Bill Clinton as United States Attorney for the District of Arizona. While she was a governor in the state of Arizona, and I was a faculty member moving from one university to another, she really created a great name as being a wonderful supporter of higher education. And we are so pleased to have her as our president and of course here with us today. So with that, I would like to ask President Napolitano to come forward. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be here for such a wonderful conference. And uh, I thought the last two speakers were terrific, and I thought the videos were terrific, so thank you again. I was thinking about my own experience with, with global health, um, and uh, everybody has an anecdote or two, I suppose, but I was on a 30-day walk through the Indian Himalayas, and uh, on the Indian side, and, and on the 29th day, I stepped over a wall onto a wild dog, and he put a, took a chunk out of my leg. Um, he didn't like being stepped on, I suppose, and, and then ran off. Uh, that's an area of the world where rabies is endemic, so there I was, uh, and I needed to start figuring out how to, how to begin the vaccination uh, process for rabies. And I was in a little place, kind of isolated, um, it was occupied at the time by the Indian Army. Uh, they had actually declared martial law in this area, so this was very handy for me because they travel with, with vaccine. Uh, so I began the, the procedure there, and you know, you get several shots over 10 days or so, and um, I actually got one of my shots. Uh, I was in a little store owned by a rug merchant, and I asked him, I said, I need to get my third rabies shot in the series. Can you tell me where to go? Can you help me? And he goes, oh, my brother-in-law, he can do it. <laughs> so he sat me down in the room where the really expensive rugs were and gave me some tea. Uh, and about 20 minutes later, up, up bicycled his brother-in-law. Uh, and in a lunchbox, he was carrying a hypodermic. And it looked like the right kind of uh, material, uh, and proceeded to give me an injection, and I proceeded to buy a rug. So <laughs> that was my experience with global health. <laughs> You're going to have quite a day here today. You are hearing from individuals who put a face on what the University of California does in the global health space from individual to panel presentations, poster presentations, videos. 
But uh, before we complete the day, or before we get even further, I'd like to tell another story. Uh, how many of you remember the year 1981? Okay. How many of you were not alive in 1981? <laughs> Just checking. The year 1981 was actually a big year for global health. It was also a big year for the University of California. That year, there was a doctor at UCLA who was studying and observing a puzzling new disease. That doctor's name was Michael Gottlieb. And in 1981, he became the first person in the world to identify AIDS. Now that discovery was remarkable, but that discovery was enabled by the efforts of many other people. First, there was a critical mass of academic researchers. There were clinical specialists. Um, and at the same time, there was state-of-the-art, or what was then state-of-the-art medical technology that a university medical center can provide. Now, the University of California still makes breakthroughs in the field of AIDS and the related, as we know, the virus, HIV. For the last three decades, researchers at this university have blazed a trail for how we understand and treat HIV AIDS. And when I talk about researchers under the umbrella of UC, I don't just mean those in California. I'm talking globally. So today, the head of China's HIV AIDS program is a doctor named Dr. Sunju Wu. He is a global health expert, and he's a UCLA graduate. So he's a Bruin. <laughs> Any Bruins here? <laughs> All right, work with me here. <laughs> UC Global Health Day gives us an opportunity to celebrate the past and present successes of physicians like Dr. Gottlieb and graduates like Dr. Wu. It gives us the opportunity to learn from one another and to draw inspiration for future efforts. This fall will mark the five-year anniversary of the University of California Global Health Institute. And I want to uh, just say a word of congratulations to all of you who have helped make the University of California a leader in global health research and education. Um, and uh, in particular, let us thank Dr. Haile DeBoss and Professor Tom Coates for having the vision to create this institute and the unrelenting determination to carry that vision forward. Um, and I already have some ideas gleaned just from a few moments here this morning of interactions I can have as a university president and somebody who has been involved in law and public policy on how some of our institutions uh, need to perhaps reframe how they view research, but also how they review and look at the impact of research and how that translation occurs. So as advocate in chief for the University of California, uh, let me boil down my vision to two phrases. We teach for California and we research for the world. We teach for California, we research for the world. And this institute and this day is a great example of that dual mission. In this audience, we have faculty, we have researchers, and there are students here from all 10 UC campuses and from many diverse disciplines. You represent the health sciences, the social sciences, economics, public policy, agriculture, and environmental sciences. This is a powerful collaboration in and of itself to have you all in one room at one time. Your training, uh, those of you who are faculty are helping train, and those of you who are students are learning to become the global health leaders of tomorrow. You need and need to work together to solve these most complex and urgent problems. Uh, 
problems that are systemic, endemic, and extraordinarily difficult uh, to go from identification to the process of cure, what clinically needs to be done, to translation. Well, how do you do that across a very complex world in very disparate cultures and histories and economics and societies and politics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got to get it right. You know, you've got to figure this out. And you should have a sense of urgency about this because the world keeps changing. New diseases keep occurring um, and uh, people are dying. So there should be, as we collaborate, as you collaborate, a sense of let's, let's get going. Uh, let's move. We're doing that. We need to say, OK, how we can do even more. This is exactly what the University of California was created to do. We have a long history of addressing the world's most pressing issues, whether it's climate change, food, or the California drought, the university needs to step up with collaborative and science-based solutions, and then a willingness to figure out how to apply them. Uh, that is what the role of a world-class public research university is. That is where we are at the University of California. Um, we have brilliant thinkers and innovators many of them in this room today. And by the way, amongst you who are students, you are brilliant thinkers and innovators. And you need to be thinking of yourself that way. You are attracted to the university or were attracted to the university because of some belief in you that you could get not only a world-class education here, but maybe an opportunity to help transform the world, to, to to create change that makes a difference. You know, there's a, a, a YouTube video by a, a comedian named Taylor Molly, um, uh, and he's talking about teachers. Uh, and uh, he's comparing the salaries that teachers make uh, to the salaries that uh, others might make. Um, and he says, and the point of the whole uh, YouTube video is, it's not what you make, it's whether you make a difference. It's not what you make, it's whether you make a difference. Global health makes a difference. So we need to have lofty goals and we need to have some sense of uh, collective urgency about them. Um, this is going on all through the UC and that's one of the delights of my job because I get to, to see it all. Um, the Center for Brain Mapping Activity at San Diego, the green technology research uh, taking uh, place right here in places like the West Village, which is a reflection of multidisciplinary teamwork. I got to spend the night there once. Um, these are all quests for science-based basic knowledge that has huge public policy implications. And as I've said, there is no entity in the world as well positioned to take on these endeavors as our university. Uh, global health, a key part of our collective vision. Now, um, the mission that is shared in this room to bring health, safety, and stability to the populations of a planet is uh, a fabulous one. Um, global health. Um, however, doesn't necessarily begin beyond the borders of California. Uh, we need to also look at building healthier communities right here in this state. Uh, uh, you know, right now in East Los Angeles, uh, an area called Boyle Heights, uh, the UCLA School of Public Health is working um, to transform corner markets uh, to sell fresh fruits, vegetables, healthy snacks, um, and they're now getting uh, support, research support, for those transformative efforts. They've involved local high school students. Uh, their charge is to promote healthy eating among friends, neighbors, and family members. Uh, they earn school credit for taking a year-long course in nutrition and marketing. You're not going to get high school kids to change their behaviors unless you put some incentives in there. 
Um, so you've got to be creative in thinking about what are the incentives that change behavior. And that applies to high school students and university students and those who are uh, uh, in the globe uh, around, our, uh, around our planet. Um, there are models for academic, other models for uh, spurring uh, community involvement um, and community participation in their own health. So global health has so many aspects to it that it's almost too many to name. So I thought you, you got such a great presentation uh, this morning about all of the disciplines involved and how they can work interactively to affect change and do so on a real-time basis. You know, another great example of this, by the way, is at UC Davis at the Telehealth Center. I saw that too. It is providing adult and pediatric care uh, throughout California. It has helped reduce medication errors in pediatric emergency cases by a lot. Um, rural doctors often don't have pediatric specialty training. Uh, many times, if they're not a pediatrician, they may not have a lot of experience in treating seriously ill children. And they also lack access to resources, resources like electronic medical records, computerized prescription systems, 24-hour pharmacist coverage, and so on and so on. So when a pediatric special at UC Davis is right there, literally, virtually, uh, in the room with the child, with the rural physician, with the nurses, with the parents, uh, via a telehealth system, um, care uh, goes up and errors go down. This isn't a magic wand for healthcare. But it is an important tool for improving, uh, improving health care access. And it has many applications on a global scale. Um, so today, um, you will hear some other presentations on the use of mobile technology to provide training and specialty consultations in remote regions. So we teach for California, we research for the world. And our research for the world can begin in California and have uh, large implications globally. Um, this is a field, global health, that is uh, mined with challenges. Um, in developing countries, uh, you know, access is a big issue. Cultural issues can be a big issue. Basic is basics like clean water, food, reliable sources of electricity. If you have to keep something refrigerated all the time and you don't have a steady source of power, that's a problem. That's a problem. So you've got to be able to figure that out. Uh, and maybe it's taking a couple of shipping containers and putting them up in the jungle someplace and putting it with a generator to make sure that you can do that, right? Right. So. That's one set of problems. And then you have another set of issues, and you're going to confront this because many of you will, at some point in your life, seek funding. And you'll seek federal funding. And you'll seek funding from international and local agencies and private nonprofits. Um, we need to educate them better about the work that we do and how it's actually done to attract even more funding to our efforts. That's something. Um, that uh, a university president can help with. Um, but uh, we also need to be thinking about uh, overall a new sustainable funding model and how we prioritize the resources we already have throughout the, re throughout the entire university. That's also something uh, that we need to uh, be looking at and are in the office of the president. Uh, you know, uh, we talk a lot about communicable disease. Um, we need to talk about conditions, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes. Um, they're actually, uh, numbers-wise, threatening to surpass communicable disease in terms of uh, health impacts, certainly in the United States. Drug resistance, the global health workforce shortage, the issue of having to train a lot of people so you don't have boxes of equipment just sitting on the ground, dropped there by some you know, well-meaning uh, nonprofit group that raised a lot of money. They had a dinner. They did this and this. You know, A microscope and a box doesn't do anybody any good. You've got to have 
the way to, to use it, people trained to, to work it, other people who can maintain it, spare parts when it breaks down. So it is sustainable uh, once, uh, uh, once uh, a particular person leaves. Um, these are uh, all issues implicated in what we are talking about here today, global health, where we teach for California and research for the world. So uh, we have lots of challenges. Big issues have lots of challenges. That's one of the reasons they're big issues. Um, but we're, we're on the case. Um, we have uh, mustered and collected resources. I think we can look even more about what we do collaboratively. Um, and uh, I'm proud to say that at the university, we pick big issues to work on as an institution. 10 campuses, you know, quarter of a million students. Uh, you know, uh, five health centers, three national laboratories. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing system. It should be working on big issues. You should be working on big issues, and I'm glad you are. So it's my pleasure to share uh, this day with you and to thank you both for many of you, the work you've already done, but particularly for the students in this audience the students in this audience for the for the life work you intend to do thank you